Hi, and thank you for watching. Let's look at this idea that single whip is the most important posture in the Tai Chi routine. I'm going to be talking about it from the perspective of Chen style Tai Chi, but I think it applies to all of the styles of Tai Chi. This, when I say it's the most important movement in Tai Chi, partly is because this idea that the more important moves are the ones that show up more often in the traditional routine. This is a little bit like the idea that when you have letters, there's some letters in the English alphabet that we use more often and uh, they show up more in different words. So using those understanding and recognizing those letters allows you to have a better vocabulary. And so a similar idea within the Tai Chi routine, uh, the postures that show up more often are often seen as the more important ones in terms of training techniques, in terms of uh, training postures and movements, and in terms of teaching principles. And of course, single whip is one that shows up in the traditional uh, long routine uh, seven times, far more than uh, any of the other uh, postures. So let's look at the posture a little bit from Chen style perspective, look at some of the different aspects, and then try and figure out why is this move the one that seems so important? The move itself is one coming from uh, six ceilings, four closings. We come through stepping out, shift the weight, close the right leg, shift the weight back, drill the left hand up, bring the arm across, and set. The arms are at shoulder height, left palm is open, right fingers are closed, weight is more, uh, 70%, on the left side, hips are facing front. So there's our posture there. And from, let's look at it first from a martial perspective in terms of applications. First thing, small note, uh, is that when it's taught, it's always taught facing this way. In terms of a martial application, the opponent is here on this side. So uh, when you're trying to understand this posture, it makes more sense to think of the posture this way here, right? when you're understanding the application. And the application is commonly described as something where the opponent is here, you step behind them. So they're much closer than uh, many people at the initially believe, right? The person is right here. You step behind them. There is an elbow strike that's possible, shoulder strike, elbow strike here into the ribs. Right? And then from there, extend the arm. The arm comes across the chest. And then there's a takedown or knocking a person over. They come over, get pushed over this leg by this arm here. One interesting uh, and unique thing about this posture is that the technique comes from the left side. Single whip uh, is the left side. Lazy tying of coat, of course. Similar move, but on the right side. Obviously, cover fist and punch. Right side. Even something like leaning body strike. Here, striking with right side again. There's a, an assumption uh, in the routine that everyone is right-handed and so the techniques favor uh, striking with the right side, except for single whip. So maybe this is why single whip is seen as the important move possible. We could also look at this posture from a health perspective, a health cultivation, chi cultivation perspective. This is a very nice move. If from that perspective, a nice, open, extended move, encouraging uh, a nice upright frame, open frame, so that the circulation of the chi in the blood extends to all of the extremities and uh, calms and centers the heart, uh, and so settles the nervous system. And so there may be, therefore, maybe it is a very good health promotion posture. It's a good posture for sure. But if you look at the uh, standard 
methods of, uh, that get applied to Tai Chi for health. They mainly are a standing posture, standing meditation, there's a sitting meditation, and then there's a silk reeling postures or a silk reeling exercises. Right? These are more emphasized, these are more common, these get prominence uh, when we're talking about Tai Chi and health cultivation. Uh, it's not that a single whip isn't in that. If you're doing a shorter routine, often it's a shorter routine for health cultivation, single whip will be in there. But it's not one that gets um, more attention. Not like the traditional long first frame, uh, a first routine, old frame or new frame. So I think, and I mentioned earlier, that the routine teaches postures, teaches movements, trains principles. And I think this is why this posture, uh, single whip, shows up so often. And it emphasizes the principle of the five bows. The five bows are the connection across the chest to the arms, the connection uh, through the pelvis that connects the legs, there's also the connection across the torso from one leg to the opposite arm and vice versa. And then the fifth bow, of course, is the bow of the body. And bows, when we're talking about bows, it means that there's a integrated and springy quality uh, to these lines, right? And so this is a move, even more so than lazy tying of coat, that helps you find and put attention and intention into these five bows, because it's here. And from a teaching perspective, it's also uh, one, a posture where you can easily tell when a student is being able to apply that principle to their practice. Common mistakes that uh, are seen with this posture from here, from this, to this. These are all an uh, absence of those five bows. So, means when you're going through your training, when you're doing your practice, pay attention to the five bows, especially when you come to this posture single whip. Uh, and try and maintain that feeling of these five bows as you go through your training. And when you come to the next single whip posture, there's an opportunity to check in and see whether you've maintained that consistency of those five bows in that period, uh, in that section. So I hope that information is helpful for you. Keep training, keep practicing, and take care.